Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I thought I would do a follow-up video on the allegations of R. Kelly having herpes. And I actually came across something that was really interesting. So this video won't have anything to do, or at least it won't directly relate to R. Kelly's herpes claims. But in a, in a way, it's, it's indirectly related. And I'll explain why uh, a little bit later. But anyway, I, I kind of found some fascinating information, and it looks like there could possibly be a cure. I mean, I don't know, you tell me, but it looks like there could possibly be a cure. Basically, there is a U.S. patent, U.S. patent 5328688A, right? And basically, this is a patent for the herpes virus. Now, let me tell you up front. I'm not really the guy to basically try to explain this patent here because, as you know, I'm not a lawyer and I'm darn sure not a microbiologist or a uh, gene specialist, right? You know, so hopefully somebody like that is watching and they can kind of give us a breakdown on this U.S. patent and explain everything uh, to us. But since we don't have a microbiologist right now, you have me. I'm going to do my best to basically explain this to you and basically tell you what I think it means. Now, I will tell you that I have read a lot of this information. I haven't read it all, but I've read a lot of it. And I think we can pretty much just read the abstract, right, and give you the gist of what it means. Now, I'm going to be upfront with you. The abstract isn't really written in plain English, so I had to put a lot of work into, you know, trying to figure out what it means, and I did that by reading the rest of this document and just doing some additional research. But anyway, without further ado, let me go ahead and read it to you. So it basically says, basically the title of the uh, patent is called Recumbent Herpes Simple Vi Virus Vaccines and Methods, right? And the abstract is basically a virus is disclosed, which is rendered avirulent by prevention of expression of an active product of a gene, which is designated Y134.5, which maps in the inverted repeats flanking the long, unique sequence of the herpes simplex virus DNA, and which is not essentially a viral growth in cell culture. And which is not essential to virus growth in cell culture. I'm sorry. Viruses from which the gene was deleted or which carry stop condones are totally avirulent on intracerebral inoculation of mice. All right. So basically, what does that mean, you might ask? Basically, what they're doing is that they're taking the herpes virus and then they're targeting a specific gene, which is Y1. 34.5 and they're basically deleting it right this gene is basically the gene that is responsible for the herpes outbreaks at least that's what i deduce right so if you don't have this gene then the herpes virus is not going to produce outbreaks so what they're doing and the other thing about this gene is that even if you remove this gene or when you remove this gene the herpes virus can continue to grow and do its thing uh, without the outbreaks, right? You know, so long story dull, to me, the way I read this and from the research I've done, they're deleting the gene Y1345 in the herpes virus, and this deletion of the gene causes the herpes virus to basically be avirulent, which basically means to be sterile, right? And basically, they tested this in the cerebral fluid of mice. At least that's what I interpret it to be. So if you're a microbiologist, definitely leave your comments below and break this down for us and basically explain it. This is my explanation of it. Basically, they, they are taking a virus, they're deleting the gene in the virus, and this deletion basically makes the herpes virus sterile and it basically does no damage, right? So with this said, to me, this is basically a cure, and I wonder how long before it actually reaches the market. Hopefully it'll reach the market and some drug company won't buy it up and then make some perverted version of this vaccine 
so that they can make money off you and just, you know, keep you for le forever dependent on their drugs. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I believe stuff like that happens a lot of time, right? But basically from reading this, I think this is an actual cure for herpes, an actual, and by cure, I mean vaccine, right? So the question is, how did we get here? We got here because I was doing research on the R. Kelly's herpes allegation, and I came across this case, which basically led me to the patent, which we just reviewed. Now, this case is an appeals court case in Chicago, of all places, and it's basically a case where the plaintiff's name is Joanny Chow, or Dr. Chow, if you will, and the defendant is Bernard Roisman, right, or Dr. Roisman. And there's other defendants like the University of Chicago and the Aviron Company, but they're only defendants through Bernard Roisman. So I'm really just going to focus on Bernard Roisman to keep this plain and simple, right? So basically, the crux of this case is that Dr. Chow or Joanny Chow basically goes to the Illinois Appellate Court because her case was basically thrown out in the lower court. In the lower court, she filed a claim for correction of inventorship. She wanted to get a, a declaratory judgment of inventorship. She wanted to basically claim, make a claim for fraud, breach of fiduciary duty, unjust enrichment, breach of express contract, and breach of implied contract. Now, we're not going to go through all those issues uh, in detail. We're really just going to sum all this up. And just keep it moving right so i will tell you that i have read the, the case the case is pretty long and it has some pretty complex stuff i'm going to spare you from all that and i'm basically just going to sum it up and i'm going to embellish some details along the way right so basically long story dull dr chow was basically working under dr roisman at the university of chicago and at that time, she discovered that she can deactivate the herpes virus. And basically, you've, I've already explained how she accomplished this in the actual patent. So what she does, she goes to Dr. Roisman and says, hey, you know, I've just made an amazing discovery. I think we need to go to the patent office and file this. Dr. Roisman refuses to file it because he basically tells her that it's not really worth filing. I'm embellishing. And at the same time, Dr. Roisman takes her research and then goes and files his own patent at the U.S. Patent Office. In addition, he filed several other patents. He filed 795-713. He filed 5922-328. In addition to filing her patent, 5328-688. And then he also actually filed several foreign uh, applications for patents, which I'm not even going to mention here because it's just too confusing to read, but he filed several other foreign patents, right? So she got pissed and she basically went and filed a, a claim against him, University of Chicago, and the company he started. Now, under University of Chicago's policy, inventors receive a 25% gross royalties and upfront payments from licensing of patents, as well as a 25% of the stock of any new companies that's created as a result of the inventions. So needless to say, she's pissed because Dr. Roisman is trying to basically defraud her out of her earnings or what she feels she's entitled to. The case ends in appellate court in her favor. Dr. Roisman was kind of a a hustler, you know, he basically defrauded her. There's even a statement where Chow and him had spoke. Roisman specifically told her that he would take care to properly protect her research, inventions, and co-invention, which basically means he was going to make sure that she got, number one, her recognition, and then number two, the royalties and the payments which were basically due to her. All in all, I think this is this case more likely ended in uh, Dr. Chow's favor. From reading the case, it seems like Dr. Roisman intentionally attempted to defraud Dr. Chow out of her 25% gross royalties as well as her 25% uh, stock in the companies created from the patents 
as well as her reputation because she would be known as the person who basically uh, provided the vaccine or the cure for the herpes virus. Let me know what you think. Leave your questions, comments below.